Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of God, dear saints. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, the scriptures we will be looking at today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because the mouth will go quicker than the brain. Okay? So please, read along with me in the authorized version of the scriptures. You know, I have a pride problem. I've never made any bones about that. I do. I, uh, you know, <laughs> I do. I do. Paul had a pride problem. You read Acts chapter 21 sometime, and you'll see Paul's pride problem manifest itself. Okay? All right? Peter had a pride problem. Okay? All right? We are broken of our self-righteousness. Yes. But our pride doesn't go away because why? Our spirit and soul are housed right now in this sagging skin suit. Okay? And I also don't make any bones about this that sometimes I can shoot off at the mouth. <laughs> no kidding, right? There are those dear saints out there who I know for certain have a problem when mean Brad comes out. Uh, sometimes uh, in videos where I know I'm going to get a little heated or maybe even aggravated, I'll try to warn the brethren. Because there are brethren out there who have contacted me, who have said to me, it's like, you know, Brad, you, you get pretty mean. <laughs> and I do. I do. I don't, and I do. I do. Um, I do. I do. Uh, and, you know, there are times when I shouldn't be like that. But, in Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 on to verse 8, I forget where the um, quote is in Shakespeare. Sometimes one has to be cruel in order to be kind. You know, when you're dealing with a Catholic who is ingrained in their head that they are a slave, that they have no choice. Well, I, I got to do this because I, I, I have to. I got to. Right? I got to. I have to go to Rome. I have no choice if I want to be right with God. See, that's the slippery slope. Okay? But when you're dealing with a Catholic who is under mind control, who is brain worst, <laughs> something fierce, it usually, usually takes a harsh word. And I know a soft word breaketh the bone. Yes, I know that. But, like, I, I use the analogy of the guy and the stubborn horse. You know, the guy trying to get his horse out of the stall to go into the pasture, and he's pulling the horse and trying apples and carrots, and then a dude walks by. It's like, hey, I can get that horse out of the stall. And the one guy says to him, it's like, dude, you can get this horse out of the stall into the pasture. Do whatever you got to do. So what does the one dude do? He goes and grabs his twitch. Any of you know what a twitch is? And he goes and bam, smacks that horse right upside his head without even saying a word. And the horse is like, Whoa. And the, guy's, and the guy's like, go! And the horse goes. And then the one guy says to the guy who hit the horse, it's like, you hit my horse. Why'd you do that? It's like, well, I had to get their attention first. And when you, brethren, when you're dealing with a Catholic, when a, dealing with a, a Hebrew is easier than dealing with a Catholic. Okay? Dealing with a uh, Muslim is easier than dealing with a Catholic. Okay? Dealing with an A I would rather deal with ten atheists than five Catholics, <laughs> to be honest with you. Okay? But Catholics are very difficult to witness on. Not impossible. I mean, you know, 
Let's, I mean, you know the scriptures uh, at all a little bit, um, you know, that's, that makes the difference. But witnessing to Catholics is very difficult. It is. And usually, seven out of ten times, it requires harshness to get their attention. Because they are lulled to sleep by dragons speak anyway with their smooth, soft words, which come from the whore. Okay? But we have to remember, I have to remember too. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 on to verse 8. And don't sing that disgusting song. Don't uh, get that out of your head. Uh, Brother Alexander and I, we, we surmised that they were using when they did that song that has this in there, I'm not even going to say it, uh, we surmise that they were using what? The NIV or uh, the um, Living Bible. Okay? Something around those lines. But anyway, to everything, there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones. And a time to gather stones together. We are lively stones too, by the way. Remember? <laughs> said, uh, uh, if these held their peace, even the stones would shout out. Okay? We're lively stones. Look at that verse, okay? <laughs> a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. S-E-W or sue. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time to keep, uh, a time to hate. Excuse me, I just lost my place. A time of war and a time of peace. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Hmm. And verse 7, a time to run and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. You and I, we are called to be saints. We are called to be saints. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 7. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 7. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit, lowercase s, of holiness by the resurrection of the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. Now the Calvinists will come to this and try to weasel and worm in there, slither in there, their elect and non-elect heretical doctrine. Called. God called you. The way of the cross. Called. God is, God is a God who chooses. God is a God who calls. You are called to him the way of the cross. That's what that means. It is not the heretical Calvinist doctrine of elect and non-elect. Watch out for that. 
So all that being wrong, beloved of God, called to be Christians, oh, excuse me, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now see, a saint, because of Catholicism, when you, especially you Catholics, oh, oh, Try that sometime, brother, sister. You're talking to a Catholic, and you know you're you know you say, "Well, I'm not a Christian. Thank you very much. I'm a saint." Look at the reaction. Oh, think that think mighty highly of yourself. Uh, no, rather you've been deceived of what a saint actually is. Now, our brother and I, brother Alexander B. Hartley did a beautiful <laughs> um, podcast thing, um, a Bread of Life uh, podcast on what is a saint, which will be in the description box for you, okay? Um, Catholicism gives you this idea that a saint is someone who is sinlessly perfect, you know, with the, the nimbus around their head and everything. Scripturally speaking, that is not what a saint is. Okay? A saint is someone who is right with God and or saved. Old Testament saints, saints for today, uh, uh, time of Jacob's trouble, saints. Okay, A saint today is simply a saved person. But see, because of what Catholicism has done, because of what they have done, you believe a saint to be something that they are not. Okay? We're called to be saints. And if anyone was a saint, it would be the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul who also had issues. Romans chapter 1. I, w I doubt there'd be anyone, well, there are. I'm sure there are, of course, because there are people out there who say that Paul was a false prophet. But someone who's claiming to be a genuine saint uh, of the Church of God, um, they would not at all dispute that Paul was a saint. But Paul had a pride problem. Read Acts chapter 21. Paul sinned. Peter had a pride problem. Peter <laughs> definitely sinned. Saints, dear people, sin. Okay? All right? Saints sin. Like I said, check out that podcast that the Lord had Brother Alexander and myself to do. That was a good one. <laughs> not, to, not to do any of this, but that, that was a good one because that, that was of the Lord. Okay? <laughs> yeah. So check that out. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 on to the close. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a f and one of my favorite verses of all of Scripture. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And see, a saint would be like, I'm worse than that person. A sleazy believers who save themselves by their own belief, just lightly scratching them, it comes out, well, I'm better than so-and-so. You think Dahmer's, I've, I've, I've dealt with this one personally, you think Dahmer's in heaven, and you think I'm lost. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And what's the, what are they inferring there? That they're better than Dahmer, who's in heaven. Okay? The, without exception. Without exception, every single one of you sleazy, believest, fake gracers that I have ever encountered, sooner or later, it all comes around to you with that with you guys this very same thing I'm not that bad 
Well, we're, they hide under the, well, we're all sinners, but the personal accountability which they like to avoid in their beloved Romans chapter 3, they don't like to deal with. Okay? All right? And Paul, he's right up front with it. It's like personally, I make mistakes, boom, as you haven't figured that out already. I, I, I lose my cool, okay? I'm hardly perfect. <laughs> forbid okay but see I don't hide those things I don't hide them there are other prominent YouTube preachers out there who do and yes you don't do your dirty laundry in public that's right that's true amen but when it comes to this when you make mistakes when you do oopsies, okay, when you fly off at the handle, you need to have that transparency. I believe you need to have that transparency because if you don't, then you'll have people wanting to put you up on a pedestal like Rachman, okay? All right? And praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord that would never ever happen on my account. God forbid. And if, it's like, point them out to one of the videos where I've made a mistake in and I had to make a correction video on it. Okay? Alright? But this is a faithful saying we're, and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul, Paul's a saint. Paul was a saint. You're saved, you're a saint. But I still sin. Saints sin. See, you've been deceived by what Rome, Satan, has told you what a saint is. Okay? Okay? Howbeit for this cause I obtained mercy. Now verse 16 is very critical here. Uh, important. Okay? Very critical and important for us. Because in verse 16, Paul is letting us know that he was to be the archetype for the modern day saint. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Very important there. Okay? To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Okay? Paul was the overall example of the saint to the church of God this dispensation okay even Peter acknowledged that in the close of oh is it uh, second Peter chapter 3 okay even Peter acknowledged that let's let's verify that shall we let's verify that let's verify that uh, let me see verses 15 on to verse 18 in Second Peter chapter 3. An account that the law... Let 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. If Paul was considered a false prophet... By the apostles. Why in Hades would your blessed Pope Peter, which he was never a Pope, okay, why would he call him a beloved brother? Okay, come on. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures. Right. Catholics, Christians, false converts. Unto their own destruction. Perfect example of that is not rightly dividing the word of truth, trying to make doctrine today the best example, the Sermon on the Mount. Trying to say that that's doctrine for us today. Instruction in righteousness, 
Absolutely. Doctrine, no. No. And on the backup channel, uh, uh, righteousness. I'm writing this down. Righteousness, okay. Uh, on the backup channel, we, we go through what the difference between instruction and righteousness and doctrine is. Okay? All right? Instruction and righteousness, the uh, Sermon on the Mount, brava! Absolutely! Doctrine as pertaining to salvation! No. No. Okay? Perfect example. See, Catholicism doesn't rightly divide the word of truth. Catholicism also tells you that the Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for us today. It isn't. It isn't. Hence, hence, unlearned and unstable rest. And see, the thing about a lot of Jesuits and Catholics, that you know, the ones like the Jesuit order who do the teaching, they ain't ignorant. See, there has to be a level of knowledge of truth there in order to deceive in the manner in which Rome does. Like what a certain individual, which I'm not even going to go there. Um, there is a certain knowledge of the actual truth there, but used as a means to deceive. Hence, probability isn't there. Possibility, all things are possible with God. Yes, they are. The probability does not exist. Okay? <laughs> okay? But, Verse 17, therefore, beloved, ye therefore, beloved, seeing that ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, such as the Roman Catholics, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Look at that verse. To him. To your priest? No. To your pastor? Pastoress? No. To who? To him. Growing the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How can a Catholic grow in knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when they're admonished not to read the scriptures? Yes, we are, but come on, not one Catholic disputed this, and they know better. <laughs> Read, the, read your Bible, but don't read it too much because you'll get in a heresy and you've got to come to us for, you, for us to explain it to you. We talked about that earlier, okay? Beg your pardon, all right? Go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1 again. Verse 17. Now on to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. And see, Saints sin, people. Rome has given you the wrong picture, surprise, surprise, of what a saint is. Okay? A saint today, especially, beg your pardon, my glasses are giving me a problem. Here. A saint today is someone who is saved. Okay? And have you not figured it out that saved people sin? Romans chapter 7, verses 15, on to verse 25. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Paul's talking about how he still sinned. He didn't want to sin, but he still sinned. See, as long as our spirit and soul are housed in this sagging skin suit, this is where sin is. Okay? This is where sin is. All right? And until we get out of this, we're going to sin. Okay? All right? If then I do that which I would not sin, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. 
What is he talking about? I thought the Lord... Let's keep reading. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. The flesh itself. This crude matter. This dirt that our spirit and soul are housed in. This is made out of dirt. Okay? We're made out of dirt. All right? Okay? For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, I'm saying it that way perfectly, brother, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, not sin. You know, keeping the commandments perfectly, can't do it. We've, we've talked about that in depth, okay? For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Yeah, in this. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Reference the hidden man of the heart, the inward man, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. The Lord is that spirit, you know, the Holy Ghost that dwells within us. We have God the Father living within us. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members. 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 Okay. Thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. Hand offend thee, cut it off. Thy foot offend thee, cut it off. He's not talking literal mutilation. Okay? You're looking at things you shouldn't, don't look. You're, you're touching things you shouldn't, don't touch. You're going to places, don't go there. Simple. Okay? All right? But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Okay? Remember, there is a difference between bondage and slavery. Scripturally, there is a difference. They are not interchangeable. They're not. They're not. Okay? Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And isn't it interesting, what's the number before seven? Huh? That'd be six. And what's the last verse in Romans 6? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. He's not given a license to sin. What he is saying is, look, I'm going to sin no matter what. I can't stop sinning. I don't want to sin. I don't want to sin. But this flesh, this flesh gets the better of me sometimes. And I do. And until we get caught up or die, there's always going to be that struggle. And when someone comes around trying to tell you that you have to stop sinning, you bring them to Romans chapter 7. Anytime. Anytime. And, I, and I've, I've, I've seen free gracers you know, dismantle this argument as well. I hate giving those guys credit for anything. But when it's due, it's due. Um, when you got someone coming around saying that you got to stop sinning or I don't sin anymore. Number one, you've called your, you're saying, you know, you're saying that you're a God because you don't sin anymore. God never sinned. So you're saying you're another Christ. Number one, okay? Number two, you're lying. So you got two right there. Get the hence. Get, go away. Go away. We have just seen that Paul 
was allotted to be the example unto the body of Christ to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Okay? All right? Yes, Peter was the apostle unto the Gentiles, but we also see that Peter allotted for what Paul was preaching. And after Acts chapter 15, everyone came out of there preaching what Paul preached. Okay? And it's any wonder why Paul was given a thorn in the flesh, who already proved in Acts chapter 21 to have quite the pride problem. Okay? All right? But see, we as saints, we make mistakes. We sin. Saints sin. Okay? We do. We do. And see, you scoff at that because of how you've been lied to by Rome. Okay? James chapter 3. James chapter 3. James chapter 3. You know, I do, I do, let, I do get mad. <laughs> I do. And one of the things that the enemy will do is to try to push you to be like them. Meaning, fighting fire with fire. And there are times when I get angry in my videos and I do shoot off at the mouth, okay? I don't fret man at all. I really don't. Um, but um, there are times when I will shoot off at the mouth. And there is really no justification for that. Because when you fight fire with fire, what wins? Okay? James chapter 3. Now, who is the book of uh, James written to? James 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Now today, the twelve tribes are not distinct, even though the twelve tribes are there. During the time of Jacob's trouble, those twelve tribes are going to be distinct once again. Okay? The book of James is written for the twelve tribes. It is written for the Hebraic Jewish people for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? And during the time of Jacob's trouble, it is faith and works. Okay? It's faith and works. All right? Okay, it's faith and works. All right? That is me. So many people, uh, especially Catholics, uh, get messed up with James 2. Okay? James 2. And it's like, uh, well, Paul and James are saying, are speaking back to back not against one another. And I've even heard that James, uh, especially James 2, is there to uh, re refute Paul. And no, we saw that Peter referred to him as a uh, beloved brother. And so did James, okay? And this is the James, the very James, who himself had that problem of us and them. This is the James that is in Acts chapter 21. Yeah, remember that one too, Acts uh, 21. To put that in the description box for you. Okay, James, the beloved James, a dear saint that he was, he fell into that problem of thinking, of still believing, well, us Jews in this dispensation, yeah, you Gentiles, you just do this, but we Jews, we, no. That's not how it works today, doctrinally in this dispensation. Okay, that's not how it works. James, extra, uh, that'll be in the description box for you. Okay, James himself fell into that. And of course, Galatians chapter 2 is the result, okay? All right, James himself fell into that, all right? And James is in heaven. He, this is his epistle. But see... It's written on to the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Alright? And during the time of Jacob's trouble, eternal security is not there. Today, you and I can spout off at the mouth at anything, and it's not going to cost us our salvation. Okay? It's not. It's not. The unpardonable sin has nothing to do with us today. 
It has nothing to do with them during the time of Jacob's trouble. During the kingdom of heaven, uh -huh, because he's going to be on the earth. Okay? But, also, remember that. Unpardonable sin. Okay, excuse me. All right. James 3, verses 1 on to verse 8. Brethren, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater damnation. That's why I take this very seriously. Okay? I make mistakes. Okay? I make mistakes. And if I need correction, I will be corrected. Okay? But, and see, a lot of these guys, like the... Uh, the Inquisitor from New York, Elmer from New York, he's, I remember that video. This is easy. This is easy. And yeah, anyone can press a button, sit here, and blab anything. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Uh, I think too many people do that. <laughs> Especially that Tom guy and his two little pet whatever that he does, okay? Guy needs to shut up. But, being led of the Lord, being called to do this is something totally different. And, you know, that's why there are some out there who I believe will be in this position, but they're waiting until they know for sure the Lord's like, okay, you go now. <laughs> all right? For in many things we offend all. Unless you're from the coasts of England, you never make a mistake there. If any man offend not in word, the same is also a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And when you know someone who is really sharp with their tongue, I get sharp with my tongue. And there are times when I need to be reminded. It's like, Brad, Brad, we're a little out of line. Brad, Come on, Brad. I admit that. I admit that. Mm -hmm. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. And when you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, when you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9 on verse 16, for I think that God hath set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools, according to the world, for Christ's sake. But ye are wise in Christ. And Paul being sarcastic. We are weak, but ye are strong. Yeah. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Yeah, you Christians, you are honorable. But we, saints, we're despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. And labor working with our own hands, being reviled, we, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made of, as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. And the immediate follow-up with that is what? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. 
Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Yes. Being reviled, we bless. Oh, thank you for reviling me. No. Faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. It is written. It is written. It is written. We respond with scripture. And when they don't want to hear scripture, how we behave, how we live in accordance to scripture is also a testimony. Okay. Now, there are some examples in Scripture where, okay, being reviled, we bless. There are some uh, examples in Scripture where Paul and Peter let their mouth get the better of them. Acts chapter 23. Acts chapter 23. Paul our apostle of the Gentiles, but overall the example unto the body of Christ on how to serve Christ in this dispensation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Here's a, here's a, point, uh, uh, a moment when Paul shot off at the mouth. And Paul earnestly beholding uh, Acts 23. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Am I... Uh, Oh yeah, and Paul earnestly beholding the council said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Smack them. And how does Paul react? Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. Now, to us today, in this uh, age where the F-bomb being said by little four-year-olds is cute, okay, and the jarbling and mumbling and jumbling of the so-called English language is a joke, okay, uh, it's like when the Lord said, tell that fox, back in these times, calling someone a fox that, that was quite an insult. Paul referring to the high priest as a whitehead wall. Okay? In our terminology, you could argue that Paul was giving the up yours to this individual. That was a very serious thing that he said. Okay? Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thou whited wall. For sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law. Verse 4. And they that stood by said, As revilest thou God's high priest. And look at what Paul did. He realized. Okay, okay fine. Yeah, you're right. Then said Paul, I wist not, brethren that he was the high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. So see, right there is an incident where Paul, Scott Slime, he's like, Oh, hey, man! But then the, guy, the guys are like, Dude, that, that's like the high priest. You know, the one that goes behind the veil uh, once a year on Yom Kippur. Okay. All right. And Paul's like, oh, oh, yeah, but yeah, that's right, beg your pardon. Okay? And everyone also knows Luke. Luke, okay? Everyone knows this one, who claims to be uh, saved, at least, knows about this one. If you don't, what are you reading? The Missal? Luke 
22. 54 on to 62. Then took they him, Jesus, and led him, and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall, and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, and earnestly looked upon him, and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour after, another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And another uh, uh, things where this is being described, it says that Peter did what? Cursed and swore. Hold your place here. Hold your place here. Go to Matthew. Go to Matthew. Go to Matthew. Go to Matthew. Uh, one second, please. I've got to find it. Matthew 26, verse 74. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. Now you got to remember, um, Christ had yet to die on the cross. Peter was not a saved man there. Okay? But we're looking at this for an example of when someone shoots out of the mouth. Okay? Go back to Luke chapter 22. Okay? Verse 60. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake the cock crew, and the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter went out and wept bitterly. And of course, Peter's a saint. He was never a pope, but he's a saint. Paul, sin. Okay? Paul, let his temper get the best of him in Acts chapter 20, uh, 23. Paul, sin. Paul had a pride problem, but he was a saint. You, you got to check out that video about what is a saint, okay? You really do. You really do. Ecclesiastes 5. Ecclesiastes 5. Today is the fifth. Today is the fifth. Ecclesiastes 5. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Dispensational difference. Okay? Under the law, they had the synagogues. They had the temple. Okay? Different dispensation. Not today. Okay? Today, God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Okay? Right? you got to rightly divide the word of truth. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. Fool says in his heart there is no God. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, Brad. Put your name there. Whoever you are. Be not rash with thy mouth. Your name. Let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. And a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. In Proverbs 10, verse 19, thank you, Lord, we read, uh, actually, let's read 18 and on to uh, 21. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but... 
He that refraineth his lips is wise. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay? The lips of the righteous feed many. But fools, who say in the heart there is no God, die for want of wisdom. And wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Hmm. Let's continue in Ecclesiastes 5. Verse 3 again. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. But in the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. We're going to look at some interesting scriptural examples of this. Okay? We are going to look at uh, some scriptural examples of this. Okay? When thou vowest a vow, when thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Now in context, this is referring on to vows, which we have addressed in other videos. Okay? Let's continue. Better it is that thou shouldest not vow, than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Context is in um, talking about vows. But as any of you have figured out, and as we have already seen, okay, Paul in Acts 23, his mouth, okay, all right, our mouth can cause our flesh to sin. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, okay. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there, also, there are also diverse vanities. But fear thou God. Now there's this thing of a multitude of words. And how many of you have heard from these Christians in the buildings? It's like, a good preacher can say what he has to say in five minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. But then when someone takes a little while and gives you scripture upon scripture upon scripture, that's overkill, huh? Acts 20. Acts 20. See, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. But fool is known by a multitude of words. What's going on here? What's going on here? Acts chapter 20, verses 7 on to verse 12. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the, that's Romans 10 verse 17, hearing by the missal. No. Hearing by the catechism. No. Hearing by the book of discipline. No. Half a bit. Hearing by the word of God. Acts 20. Verses 7 on verse 12. And upon the first day of the week, which is Sunday, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart, ready to depart on the morrow. And continued his speech until midnight. Now there are those of you who have knocked on me for uh, doing a video that was almost three hours. And uh, stuff like that. And you know after five minutes they go away. And that you know that's how it works with a lot of these people. Okay. But um, I was preaching until midnight. And well past. Do you guess there were a multitude of words there? Hmm. But see, he was preaching the word of God unto the saints for edification, for instruction. Okay? And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, 
He sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. Okay. Long preaching. There were a multitude of words there. But yet, there was no sin there. Why? Because he was preaching to them with multitude of words. See? Okay? And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had taken and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. So right there too, Paul brought back someone to life. Some argue he was just out cold. No, the guy, the kid was dead. Okay, the guy was dead. Okay, Paul brought him back. And think about this. He, Paul preached all night into the morning. And some of y'all are all worked up about a two-hour, three-hour video. huh? He was preaching all night. How many of you could uh, handle something like that? Without tapping your foot, looking at your watch. It's like, oh, the game is on. Oh, I got to go catch up on my uh, uh, episode of whatever. Yeah, right. Right. But see, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. And also in that context in Proverbs 10, also in that context of Proverbs 10, okay? The context, verses 18 on to verse 21. Okay? 18 on to verse 21. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Hideth. Don't tell them the truth. Don't scare them. So what do they tell you? God loves you unconditionally. And slander. You're slandering the Lord when you say things that, uh, that of him are not true. That God loves the Christ-rejecting sinner, which he does not. His wrath is for them. Okay? All right? <clears throat> In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. There, want, there was no sin in what Paul was doing. All right? But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Okay? What is this talking about? This is an admonition about shooting off at the mouth. Okay? The tongue of the just is as choice silver. Okay? In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin. Verse 20. The tongue of the just is as choice silver. The heart of the wicked is little worth. Verse 19. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Sometimes we need to put a rain on our tongue. <laughs> right? Right? Hello? Okay? We do. We do. We really do. The lips of the righteous feed many feed many, as Paul did in Acts chapter 20. The heart of the wicked is little worth. Why? Because the heart of the wicked, the heart of the wicked, okay, the heart of the wicked, the heart of the wicked, Proverbs 28, 26, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. The heart of the wicked. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And also, in 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1, on to verse 2. 2 Timothy 1, uh, 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 
and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And of course, 2 Timothy 4, verses 1 on to verse 4, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. And to everything there is a season. To every purpose there is a season. Instead of, instead of butchering that, let's go right to that and read that again. To uh, Ecclesiastes 3.1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure a sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned on the fables, such as the fables that Rome gives you. God loves you unconditionally. One God and three persons. Christians are going through the great tribulation. The whole of Scripture is written to you. Okay. By grace through faith from beginning to end. Fables. Fables. But also, there's a form of, like it says, a fool is known by multitude of words, such as the, charis uh, the charismatic Pentecostal uh, false prophets. But also, today is the fifth, Proverbs 5. Proverbs 5, verses 1 on to verse 13. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding. Attend unto my wisdom, the fear of the Lord that is being taught to you in Scripture, and bow thine ear to understand my understanding, departing from evil, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. There is that reference about speaking again. Like I said, at the outset of this video, I have a pride problem, and yes, I do shoot off at the mouth sometimes. And I do apologize for that. I do. I, I'm sorry that, yeah, I let my temper get the best of me. It is my fault, and I take responsibility for my actions, okay? I do. When you fight fire with fire, fire wins. And see, one of the tactics of the enemy is to get under your skin so that you will blow up, okay? So that you will act, so you will speak like that sometimes, okay? But see, you have a free will, you have choice, always, always. Even in your bondage, you still have choice. You don't have to be there mentally. Or you can outright refuse and then get killed or something. Okay? But anyway. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Her mouth is smoother than oil. <laughs> Diligently have I come to seek thee and to meet thee. Come with me. Let us solace ourselves with love. For the good man has gone on a long journey. He's taken a bag of money with him. I perfume my bed with coverings of tapestries from Egypt. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. And like so many of our enemies, like a certain individual who will every once in a while, more often than not, like probably once or twice a month, will change his channel's name in order, well, I get tired of it. No, 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 no. That's not the reason why they're doing it. 
lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Movable. Always changing. Slithering that way and that like a serpent who they serve. Yeah. So that what? Thou canst not know them. If some people stuck to the same title of their channel, spelled the same way, and with the same font, they could have been easily recognized and found. But when they are working for Satan, uh, a lot of times they don't want that to happen, do they? Yeah. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth, speaking scripture, okay? Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Don't go to a church building. Lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Tithing! You go to your church building, and they start their rock and roll music, and then they get to the tithing, it's like, and then they'll quote from Malachi, Malachi, and stuff like that, and they'll twist, God love with the cheerful giver, and then you Christian, you're fooled, you're duped, you're brainwashed into slavery, thinking you don't have a choice when you do. It's like, well, I guess I got to. It says right there, <coughs> you know, it says in Malachi, uh, give it to the church, I'm supposed to tithe. I've got no choice. I got to. If I don't, then God's going to be mad at me. You see, that's how they do that. That's how a Catholic is a slave, even though we have free will. They're enslaved by thinking that this is what God demands them to do something like tithing. Okay? You don't have to tithe today. Okay? God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit. But you go to a church building, a phallus house, they're going to, they're going to tell you what? Tithing. Give an offering. I remember back long ago when I had gone to a church building, I had been in some times where they had asked for two to three different offerings because it wasn't enough. It's like, you're disgusting people. Okay? You're disgusting people. All right? Verse 9, Lest thou give thine honors on, honor unto others and thy years unto the cruel, lest strangers... Be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. Oh, look at that verse. You know, Christian, when you're tithing, you know eventually that's going back to the Vatican, right? No, you don't know that. You don't know that. Just like our taxes. I, I wish I could prove this to you, I've asked people who would know, who, uh, give me a documentation, get, get, send me a link to a book so I can get the book on it. But to prove that the American taxes wind up in the pocket of the Vatican? The only one who really had any evidence to support that, I don't trust, Eric John Phelps. Okay? And I tried to get a hold of him, <laughs> trying to get a hold of that guy. Yeah. But anyway. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth. Hmm. Think about that. Christian, next time you go to your precious little phallus house and they start talking to you about tithing and using the melodic music to try to get you in the mood to tithe and then you got the little girl up there standing like oh, all reverent and trying to look like she's like, oh, praying so much to the Lord that you bless this offering. Remember this verse. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. House of a stranger. Oh, like a church building? And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. And say, how have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. 
See, the buildings, the churches, the Christians are telling you one thing. We saints are telling you another thing because we're tell telling it to you through the Word of God, the authorized version. Fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. And of course, we've referenced it. we got to go to it. Proverbs 7. 21 to the close. Hmm. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. Fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. And the multitude of words are one of them. Sin. You see the difference there between what Paul was doing and what this woman, the Hua, is doing? Do you see? Can you see this? Huh? Hmm? They give you a lot of fluff, a lot of jibber jabber, tickling your ears, man. They're not teaching you to rightly divide. Teaching you that the Christians are going through the great tribulation. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it shall be for his life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths, for she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. And how is that? By her subtlety, by her sensuality. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Chambers of death, reference to... Okay? All right? And of course, Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. We saw the New Testament equivalent of this. We're going to read it out of the Old Testament. Verses 8 on verse 14. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, Children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy the seers. Again. Okay, again. Someone who is always smooth, subtle, Endearing without ever once. That's why I don't trust David Daniels. But he get he'll, he'll go off on a, a brother asking him a question. Okay, that's why I don't trust David Daniels. <laughs> okay, God, you know, God forbid I trust, uh, you know, God forbid trust Robert Breaker or Gene Kim. Gene Kim though has gone off off have flown, flown off the handle. A lot of these guys in the buildings are so sweet. <laughs> yeah. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore thus saith the Holy One of Israel. Because you despise this word. And trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. Therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly and at a suddenly at an instant. What are we reading to? Uh, verse 14. And he shall break it as the breaking of a potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it Assured to take fire from the hearth, but to take water with all out of the pit. Let's read verse 15. Let's read to verse 17, actually. 
For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. And ye would not. But ye said, No! For we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall ye flee. And we will ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. Yeah, quick to run into evil. The false, quick. You know. Uh, speedily, excuse me. Speedily. They will run. To the forefront, speedily. Quick is alive. Okay, excuse me. Okay? 1,000 shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five shall ye flee, till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain, and as an, as an ensign on a hill. The result of being duped by the whore. So, in the multitude of words that one hath not sinned, Look at Paul preaching until midnight. But a fool is known by multitude of words. Look at Christianity and look at the whore. Look at Roman Catholicism. Whose ways are movable that thou canst not know them. <coughs> With their much fair speech cause you to yield. Psalm 140. Psalm 140. Psalm 140. This is part of my de devotional reading on to the Lord today. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually they are gathered for war. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Serpent's tongue. Sharp. Adder's poison is under their lips. Selah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have proposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me. A snare for me. Again, do you realize that some of our enemies are purposely there to try to gnaw at you so that you will be thrown off your rocker so you react like them and then the minute that happens they just sit back and laugh at you it's like ha 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 Brad look at you look at you spouting off at the mouth you know, get the stone wall going on look at you Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have proposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me, Silla. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Selah. As for the head of those as for the head of those that can pass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. Look at Psalm 141, verses 3 under verse 6. Those that teach others, teach thou not thy teach thou not thyself, like it says in Romans chapter two. Look, I get I, I do. I let my anger get the best of me. I shot I shoot out at the mouth sometimes. I do, and I know that there are saints out there who that really bothers, and I'm sorry that that does, and I apologize for doing that. I I I'm not going to say I won't do it again because. You know, um, 
especially when it comes to what Rome has done to so many people, I get a little angry about that. Okay? But therein, be ye angry and sin not. But Paul, look at what happened with him. He got angry. He got smacked in the mouth. And I'm the type of guy, you smack me, I'm going to smack you back. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Paul was kind of the same way, even though it was probably he was a real frail man. But how did Paul smack back? Okay. I know people, brethren, who physically, you know, you, you, they wouldn't do anything. But, you know, when you can smack someone back with your tongue, See, I used to be the type of guy, if you hit me, I'd hit you back. And I'd hit you back harder. <laughs> okay? I would physically hit you back. But there are those out there, when they get hit, they will hit back with their tongue. And you can recover from a black eye in a couple of weeks. A uh, broken nose, oh, that's horrible, but that will recover. Okay? A busted lip will heal. You punch someone with the tongue. I have known people who have been told stuff when they were a child into their 50s still retain that wound with the tongue. So, there are times when I myself get heated and get angry and I say things I should okay I do I, I admit it I admit it I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say it's not gonna happen again because it probably will it probably will and I will be it will be addressed by the Lord through the brethren through my wife accordingly okay it will but we need to remember I need to remember as well and see, Christians are being lulled to sleep by dragon speak. That's smoothness. And see, like we addressed at the beginning of this video, there are times when you have to, especially when dealing with a Catholic, okay, you really have to be some, more often than not gruff with them, like with the horse, to smack them upside the head to get their attention. Using the sword. Okay? Verses 3 under verse 6 in Psalm 41. Which is Psalm 141. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing. To practice works. To practice wicked works. With men that work iniquity. And let me not eat of their dainties. As I have said, do not fight fire with fire. But guess what? Guess what? Unless you're some disgusting English creature from the coasts of England um, who's never a hypocrite, I, I have moments when I'm a hypocrite. I sin. But you know what? A saint is someone who is saved. I'm a saint. Now, again, you Catholics, if you make it this far, most of you won't. But if you do make it this far and you hear that, you're, you're, again, you're going to scoff because of what you've been told what a saint is. By Rome, who is getting you, who has taken you out of the way. Okay? Verse 5. Let the righteous smite me. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. I'd rather, you know, I have a brother, sister kick me in the stones. It's like, oh, it's oy vey, you know. But the kisses of an enemy. <laughs> Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. Sometimes one has to be cruel in order to be kind. And let me, let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. 
which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. When their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. When the lies of Rome come collapsing around you, fall down, Christian. Unfortunately, for the majority of you, it's probably going to be too late. But you have today. What are you going to do with today? Proverbs 26. Then we'll be done. Verses 1. On to verse 11. As snow in summer, and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemingly for fool who says in his heart there is no God. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Mm. And verses 4 and 5, <laughs> which I am guilty of. I am guilty of. Answer not a fool who says in his heart there is no God, According to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Ha <laughs> ha. I got you to get mad. I got you to spout off at the mouth. I got you to be vulgar and to be insulting. Ha 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 ha. That's childish. That's childish. That's what kids on playgrounds do. And that's the mentality of our enemies. And woe unto us when we allow ourselves to do that. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. Yeah, instead of uh, having pure water and going in that water that of life that gives you, no, you're not going anywhere and the damage you, and it's damaging you. <laughs> the legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. As he that bindeth a stone in a sling so is he that giveth honor to a fool. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth. That's going to be it for this little video today. Just a, just a quick little video addressing this thing. You know, um, like I said, when it comes to Rome and Catholicism, I hate Rome. I, I make no bones about that. And I'm not ashamed at all to say that. I hate Rome. I hate Catholicism. I hate the Catholic Church. I hate Arturo Sosa. Okay? I hate your doctrines. And I hate your God. I hate every false way, okay? Yes, the possible is, the impossible is possible with God. But Arturo Sosa? <laughs> it's like the one heretic I, I was talking to, you know, I brought up the Arturo Sosa thing. It's like, what, you're, you're saying that Arturo Sosa isn't damned? 
and he 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 you could see I could see that he was mentally trying to get this way and that to say, well, no, Arturo Sosa, the head of the Jesuit order, is not damned. And it's like, dude. Just because our enemy does one thing doesn't mean that we need to meet the enemy on their ground to be like them. And I've made actually a few of these videos before where I've, you know, it's been addressed because I will get to a point where someone needs to say something to me. It's like, no, Brad, I love you, but, um, you know, <laughs> you're getting a little, um, getting a little hostile with your words and you're right you're right you're right you're right and when you fight fire with fire what wins now you watch I'm gonna stop this video and upload it and then just like it happens <laughs> any of you who have done videos for the Lord Jesus Christ you know that there will be a kick coming. So like when I turn this off, uh, I'm going to be met with something that's like a push to try to get you, you know. So, uh, anyway, brethren, thank you for watching this if you do. I love you. Thank you for all of you who pray for us and help us. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Lord willing, we will see you in the next video.